This is CBS 11 News Now. Good morning. It's News Now, your digital update. I'm Karen Borda. We're talking today, this is the story really that everybody's going to be talking about for most of the day and probably tomorrow too. We're talking John Battaglia. For those of you who were around in 2001, you'll remember he is a guy who was convicted of killing his little girls, Faith and Liberty, six and nine years old, killing them while their mother was on the phone and she could hear their screams. It was just a horrifying case. He was convicted. He's been on death row since 2002. He's supposed to be executed tonight. There have been a couple of stays of execution prior to this, and his lawyers are hoping for a third. They say that he's mentally unstable. But uh, a judge has said, you know, the guy's just really smart, and he's faking his mental instability to avoid execution. So we're going to find out. We're going to be watching this. Execution is scheduled for 6 o'clock tonight. But we want to know what you think. Do you think, following this story, if you know anything about it, whether he should have a stay of execution or whether it's time to, to put him to death. It's something that, that a lot of us, there's a lot of debate on this, people for and against the death penalty, for instance. So we'd like to know what you think. And also, it is decision day in Denton County. Here is Brittany Jeffers with the debate. This is over the fate of a Confederate monument in Denton County. Take a look. I've been in Denton all morning long and I'm getting ready to head into the courthouse this morning where the committee is going to be meeting about this particular statue here, deciding what they're going to do with this Confederate statue. They're going to be making their recommendation then to county commissioners who will then put it to a vote. Now there's a few options on the table. They could decide to move it, to have the city move it, or they could leave it here and put some historical context behind it. Of course, we're going to be going into that meeting. We'll let you know what they recommend. Uh, we'll keep you posted on air, online, and as well as on social media. All right, Brittany, thanks. And today was a day where I didn't need the puffy coat or the Uggs, but I brought them both anyway. Just in case. Just you never know. in case. I mean, it's just kind of gotten to be habit, yeah. but it is a little bit warmer starting today. It is out a little today. bit warmer, and I want to apologize ahead of time. I think the mountain cedar, mountain cedar. is yeah. getting me big time. It's been uh, one of those mornings, but and maybe for you too, if you suffer from that type of pollen, which a lot of us do, this is mountain cedar, cedar season. Uh, and we've uh, had that strong south wind yesterday that brought a lot of it up. Today it's going to be a north wind that blows behind a cold front that's moving in. So uh, if you've been outside this morning, you know, it hasn't been quite as cold as it has been recently. It's uh, in the 50s for most of us. Uh, but now we're looking at that front pulling through the area. The winds are picking up out of the north. It will be a breezy day today. And once again, we're still talking about fire danger. We had a couple of big fires yesterday. One of them wasn't huge. It was off East 1st Street near downtown uh, Fort Worth, East 1st and Beach. Uh, that was yesterday afternoon. A little too close to home, right? It, it was right yeah. in the city, though, and I know that area well. That was not mm -hmm. too far away from uh, Top Golf and right there just to the east of downtown. Uh, that uh, was contained fairly quickly, but then there was that other one, Karen, you mm -hmm. saw up in uh, Wise County near right. Boyd. That one got uh, pretty large, over 20 acres at, at its largest. We have another day where we have concern for fire danger. I don't think it's going to be uh, as significant as yesterday because the winds won't be as strong. Uh, but still, be careful. In many areas, uh, the uh, outdoor burning is not allowed anyway, uh, right. west of Fort Worth. And 64 today behind the front is not terrible. Tomorrow will be a bit chillier. At 55, we're going to be watching that groundhog tomorrow morning, Karen. Yeah, we will. Live Tony during Bill, the show. Yes, and tomorrow I will be bringing the puffy coat, and I won't be embarrassed. And I'm you won't it. be embarrassed. That's good. <laughs> okay, now you, I have to ask you this. Be honest. Have you ever cheated while playing Monopoly? If you answered yes, Hazard's got it, the answer. It says <laughs> it is the newest version of the game. Nice. It's called the Cheaters Edition. It comes with 15 cheat cards. It's kind of like the what is it, the Community and Chance cards. There are right. 15 cheat cards, and each one has a task that includes taking money from the bank or moving someone else's token on your turn. But if you get caught, you could wind up in jail. And the, the clincher is, too, that it comes at, there's a real handcuff that's attached to the game. Oh, so wow. that's it's okay. Yeah, so I guess do not pass go, go directly to jail. <laughs> comes out this fall. But they say, the thing that I think is hilarious about this, that they say that half the people who play regular Monopoly cheat, and that is why they decided to create this cheater's edition of the game. But what happens when you cheat with the cheater's edition of Monopoly? There's just I, an I, extra level there. I, I guess, I don't know. And the thing is, they said that for the first time in Monopoly's 100 plus year history, there is no banker. Everybody is their own banker. Oh. So, you know, I just skim a couple 500s off the top. Maybe that's how you do it. Because again, the, anything the, goes. Yeah, right? the, the thing is, the goal is to have the guy with the most money at the end wins. So, that's funny. Yeah, we'll see. And um, looking at some of the comments, I want to go back to what a lot of. It's, overwhelming people uh, talking about the the battalion case Monica thanks you you're such a loyal viewer thank you very much she says you know it's it's time ready um, Lynn and Gabriel a lot of people Juliet says 
it takes a sicko to do what he did by. And uh, Stephen he goes farther than that. Stephen, he says, they should do to him what they, he did to those kids. So, um, yeah, it's just, it's just a horrible thing. And then Joanne says, aren't they all metal? Come on, because that's his excuse, obviously, mm. his mental instability. And, and yeah, there, there's probably something to that, too. But again, you know, this is going to be a story we're going to be covering for the rest of the day, certainly in our later newscasts at uh, 6 o'clock. And these th things don't often go off when they're supposed to. They're always scheduled for 6 o'clock, but many times oh, there sure. are delays. So we will continue to, uh, to follow this. We'll certainly have more on our 10 o'clock newscast and on our morning shows beginning at 4.30 tomorrow morning and, and on our social media pages, Facebook and uh, our homepage, uh, cbsdfw.com. Thank you so much for watching CBS 11, The Ones for Texas. For the latest updates, head to cbsdfw.com.